Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New York Empoleon's quarterfinal battle of the PBAL. And more importantly to me, and I know this may not matter to everybody, this will be the very last battle that I conduct in this apartment. Now, I'm not moving very far. I'm literally moving upstairs and staying in the same building. But after the recording of this, and if you look behind me, you can see packed boxes and there's some stuff taken off shelves already. So um, there's lots of stuff going on in this apartment right now. I did definitely take my time making sure that I team built really well for this team as best that I possibly could. If I lose this match, I certainly can't say it was because of lack of prep. Um, I love this team. I didn't draft this team, mind you, um, but I love this team and I've been having a blast and I don't want this to be the last battle with it. I'm going to be honest. I really want to keep going in this season just so I can keep using this team. It's super fun to use. But of course, my opponent, his name is Insanity. I actually don't recall what his team name is, but it should be the, the logo for it should be in the corner. So you guys should be able to get access to that. And his team is not a pushover. He did qualify for semifinals. He had to go through the pre-quarters in order to get there. So he's been pushing through, playing hard, playing well. And I'm expecting this to be a grueling, grinding battle. And I'm probably going to go down and I need to make sure I manage my time well and get to that end game um, with some amount of mons left that are win cons. And I do have a couple of them, so I'll talk about them in a minute. But his team, just so we don't keep wasting any time, is Gengar, Arcanine, Drake Azult, Grimmsnarl, Araquanid, Copperaja, Sandaconda, Avalug, Serena, and Zatu. And this team is obnoxious. It's just obnoxious for me to deal with, if we're being perfectly honest. Um, so right off the bat, you see that I'm actually going to be running a Flash Fire Ninetales. This is not Drought. It's the first time I'm going to run this all season. Reflect is so good because he's got so many physical attackers. Arcanine's mixed, but it could be physical. Uh, Draco's Oak, Grimmsnarl, Raquinid, Copperaja, Sandaconda, Avalug, Serena are all physical attackers. So Reflect is just so good. I really want to run Light Clay, but I think Leftovers with Substitute and Toxic makes more sense for his normal switch-ins to this. Things like the Sandaconda, the Araquanid. Don't want to take a Toxic, and I couldn't fit on Substitute if I wasn't Leftovers. There was no way I could do that. And take, being able to sub and stall out a little bit of extra Toxic, since this is the second fastest Mon um, behind only his Gengar um, and then Dragapult. Um, this is the this this would be the second fastest mon on his team. It's faster than everything else. Arcanine and Zatu both at 95. This is EV to outspeed those. And then Flamethrower is just some nice damage on things like the Copperaga, the Avalug, the Serena. It actually covers his team fairly well. But again, Toxic, Substitute, Reflect, those are more often going to be clicked. And this thing is a nuisance for him to deal with, but it's not in any way a win con. And if it needs to go down, Ninetales, I love you. But this is not your week for sweeping. This is your week for support. Next up is my other support mon, that is Steelix. This thing switches into the things like the Grim Snarl, the Drake Azult, um, the Copperaja that doesn't spam Earthquake uh, really, really well, um, and can click Stealth Rock. Again, his team is so physical that I just love having a physical wall in Steelix. Um, Roar is really good for things like Setup Sandaconda, or if I'm trying to stall out turns of um, screens with something like the Great Grim Snarl, then I'm going to be able to click Roar. Um, and get some extra rocks chip that's going to be really huge uh, a lot of my calcs are based on having one or even two sets of rocks chip on some of his more commonly switched in mons heavy slam absolutely fantastic covers his basically his entire roster that earthquake doesn't the only thing that can resist everything here is the araquanid i don't think i'm that threatened by the araquanid because of my other mons on my team so i'm okay with that that this doesn't 1v1 the araquanid as well but it can set up stealth rock and then switch out as the araquanid comes in Speaking of that Araquanid coming in, um, the only move that Araquanid can really spam freely that does a lot of damage is a water type move thanks to Water Bubble, and Water Absorb just stops that completely. So yes, he could Toxic, I'm running the Heal Bell. Yes, he could have Mirror Coat, Freeze Dry does not to hit KO him, so therefore it doesn't kill me if I do decide to click Freeze Dry. So I do have options to deal with it. Um, but Freeze Dry does like 35 to 40% if he's, if he's uh, max HP but no special defense. If he's specially defensive, obviously does less than that, and if he's offensive, it obviously does even less than that. Uh, or more than that, I should say. Um, Surf just covers whatever Freeze Dry doesn't. Freeze Dry is really good against his team, but Surf hits things like that Arcanine, the Copperaja, um, the Avalug, things that resist the Freeze Dry. And then Ice Shard's super good against some of his scarier mons that could get out of hand very quickly, like the Gengar, like the Drake Azult. Um, that could just potentially scare out a lot of my mons. This thing can come in, click Ice Shard, it does a decent amount of damage. I'm running a minus speed nature since that doesn't change any relevant calcs. Um, it still allows me to outspeed everything I would have otherwise outsped and get undersped or underspeed things that I would have already undersped if I didn't run speed investment. So I wasn't worried about it. So I'm running a minus speed so I don't lower the attack and I actually can do a decent amount of damage to just like chip, again, like 20% to the Gengar, the Drake Azult, just to try to get that last little bit of damage in case they are running away with the game. Again, calcs were relevant for rocks and if rocks don't go up or if rocks get uh, spun away or something, then I'd have to make sure I have answers in case those rocks aren't there. 
Next up is my Braviary. This thing is actually going to be, I believe I ended up with Sharp Beak, but I, let me double check. Um, just so I, no, I actually ended up with the Muscle Band. See, that's why I double check. Muscle Band Braviary this week is coming with the U-Turn Close Combat, Brave Bird, and Defog. This thing covers his entire team. His normal switch-ins to this, um, to a Brave Bird, can't take a close combat uh, very well at all. After a, uh, after Rocks, two close combats can uh, just straight up Oko or finish off the Drake Assault. And if it's not Scarfed, I outspeed it. Um, Grimmsnarl also doesn't appreciate just taking Brave Birds. Copperaja doesn't want to take a Brave Bird into a close combat. Um, Gengar certainly doesn't want to take Brave Birds. So his switch-ins to this are limited to certain things that can maybe outspeed it. But then I can go for the U-turn if I need to. Um, if something is low, this could be my switch into it. And then just U-turn out in case he wants to preserve it or do something with it. And this thing just does so much damage. It's so spammable. And his team is relatively slow such that this actually does have the ability to outspeed a majority of threats on his team that aren't Scarfed and actually allow me to scout for Scarfers without ris risking one of my most necessary Mons, which are coming up at the very end of this, obviously. Um, this thing is very, very good. It hits super hard, but again, it's not a win con. It's just a breaker. And if it goes down, scouting for a Scarf, that's huge information for me to have late game. Next up is my Bisharp. This thing, if he sets up webs, let's be honest, uh, we're in good shape. Um, because Life Orb, Sucker Punch, basically at plus two and with webs, is basically just a game ender. Um, especially if I can chip down things like the Grim Snarl. Um, that's just all the all she wrote, honestly. Um, if he doesn't set up webs, I do have the Swords Dance, um, and Iron Head can just annihilate things. Uh, Grim Snarl can't click Spirit Break freely because it'll just lower my special attack. I get plus two attack anyway, and it's just like webs are up. Um, and I just have the ability to spam attacks. Plus two knockoff is killing Copperaja. Um, it's doing like 80% to a Sandaconda. So this thing, if I can get things chipped at all, and if he sets webs up especially, then Sucker Punch wins me the game. If not, again, I don't know if he's going to set up webs. They're good against the rest of my team and feel kind of necessary for the matchup, but they aren't actually good because I have the Bisharp, thank God. So Defiant, obviously a fantastic ability, and uh, Intimidate Arcanine gives me plus one attack, things like that. So we are just going to be able to uh, to spam Sucker Punch for the most part. Um, I almost, almost, almost ran Lepaberry uh, instead of Life Orb, so that if he's tried to stall out all my Sucker Punches, I could surprise him by having eight more Sucker Punches for him to stall out. That would have been fun. Um, <laughs> but I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. And if that, if we get to that point, I figured we'd probably run out of time anyway. And lastly, we have my Dragapult. Dragapult is absolutely stupid in this matchup. It's so good. It threatens so much. It doesn't even need that much speed. I have enough speed to outspeed Gengar. I thought about running enough speed to outspeed Scarf Dracozult, honestly, but I decided that seemed excessive and I was going to lose too much power to do it. So I decided to run, um, Enough to outspeed Gengar. Scarf Drake result is a problem, but I do have things like the Steelix I can switch in if it's going for a dragon type attack. And if it's not going for a dragon type attack, then I can go into other mo other mons as well. Because, um, like, for instance, if he's going for an electric attack, uh, well, Steelix can switch in if he's not going for Earthquake, right? And if he's going for Earthquake, I've got Braviary. And if he's going for um, Bolt Beak, then this thing doesn't die to one Bolt Beak. So, Scarf Drake result is, pl I can play around it. It might cause me to. to do a couple crazy things. This isn't a minus attack nature, it's actually a minus special defense nature. Again, his, his entire team is really physical, but we're doing a minus special attack, a pos positive special attack nature, so I think it's rash. And uh, this thing's Shadow Balls and Draco Meteors are hitting absolutely monstrously hard. Um, and it's worth potentially clicking Draco on the Gengar instead of clicking Shadow Ball in case he's Cassid Berry. Um, but Sucker Punch is what I click on the Gengar if he's anything below 60%, without a doubt. Uh, that Scarf Gengar is a problem. This thing is Heavy Duty Boots because and Infiltrator because I don't want to deal with screens or webs on this. I want this to outspeed everything it's supposed to outspeed, and I want it to not have to deal with screens, so it just goes right through them and still cleaves a hole. Most of the time, if this comes in, in the early game especially, and Grimmsnarl's healthy, that thing will always switch into this. There is no downside to that, so that's why I'm running U-Turn as the last move, because that, that will allow me to, most of the early game, just click U-Turn as the Grimmsnarl comes in, and that'll allow me to go into my Steelix safely against it early game, or my Bisharp late game, and be able to deal with it as needed. And that's the team. Again, I have really tried hard to prep against his team, and if he brings something that I'm not ready for and I lose the game, then that's just phenomenal prep on his part, and I have to commend that. Um, but I really want to win because I really want to keep going in this league. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, this team builder and I will see you guys back here tomorrow with that battle quarterfinals. It's the playoffs now one loss and we're out, but three wins and we win. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everybody.